Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. So today is another day where I visited Twitter so you didn't have to. There's a whole bunch of drama going on currently. The first story we're gonna look at is some big VTuber drama involving an asset that people are using, an artist is trying to sell, and people have brought up the age of anime characters in that tired debate once again. And then we're gonna look at a VTuber who was recently banned from an anime convention for being a lollicon. And then we're gonna follow up with two stories that are updates regarding stories we covered a few days ago that I think you will find very interesting. So without further ado, let's get to the main story for today. It is censored for now. I will uncensor it briefly so you can get the full picture. But basically, this artist is selling a VTuber asset, which is basically something you can use to make your VTuber model animate or do a certain function. It's a cosmetic thing. And in this case, it involves a asset that allows your VTuber to essentially deep throat a hot dog. What is she, what she's holding right now is a hot dog with a lot of messy mustard on it, okay? It is a sloppy glizzy, okay? And it's pretty obvious, I have it paused for a reason, it goes in and out, in and out until you swallow it, okay? It's obviously, we know what's going on here, it looks like they're deep throating, you, you, you get it, okay? And here's my thing, I just want to make this very clear, uh, absolutely no disrespect to the artist at all. I think they do great assets, I think they're a great artist, and I think this one's a banger, okay? I will just give a warning for those who are VTubers and might want to use this particular asset on Twitch. I would advise that you don't because you will be banned. I, I'm just, you will be banned, it's as simple as that. So if you want to support this artist, either use it on other platforms, like, I don't care, Schmolny fans, use it there, whatever, you're fine. Or support them by purchasing other assets from them. I, I would, I, it's my duty to warn VTubers that, yeah, you will get banned if you use this on Twitch. It's as simple as that. So, it is uncensored now. You can see that this is Marin Kitagawa from My Dress Up Darling, the model they use to show off this asset. And that is important because it's what fueled a lot of the outrage involving this post. So you can see the number of quote retweets, a whole lot of them, there's a ton of replies, and it's a very mixed reaction, okay? So when I saw this post yesterday, it had almost the same number of likes, but only 100 quote retweets. But of course, since this is Marin Kitagawa and she is 15 years old, people were pulling up screenshots of her age like they found the Epstein flight logs over the past 24 hours. It is insane. But if I scroll down into the replies to this tweet, you would see tons, dozens of VTubers praising this asset who I know are well-documented aunties who have called people pedophiles over their interest in Lollicon, which is not even an age, it's just a body type. And yet, here they are gleefully cheering on a sexualized 15-year-old character. Not that there's anything wrong, this is fiction. Who cares? Ages of fictional characters is the stupidest thing to worry about. It's fiction at the end of the day. However, this doesn't matter to these people. They're ready to cancel each other over this sort of thing. And a lot of these people who normally call others pedos over Lollicon are now seeing themselves caught in 4K, you know, talking about how hot this is. Not just liking it, talking about how hot this animation is. And there's been largely two defenses they've been com coming up with, and they're equally pathetic. So the first one is they say, oh my god, I have no idea who this character was, hence I didn't know their age. The fact that Western VTubers don't know who Marin Kitagawa is, is the most fitting thing that would ever happen. Like, to the shock of no one, would Western VTubers not know arguably the most popular female anime character from the year 2022. But their other defense, of course, is that well, she's also very busty, so even though she's 15, she's very busty, so it's okay. Uh, I, I regret to inform you that is a defense that actual pedos use. I, I think, once again, Auntie's resorting to she looks older than she is, is not the own you think it is towards people calling you out for your hypocrisy on this topic. But nonetheless, yes, this is a very uh, sloppy situation. Of course, it has a lot of support, which is nice, and I encourage you to support this artist. I'll leave a, a link to this post in the description, so show support, be nice, consider giving them a follow. But yeah, that's an unfortunate situation they're dealing with because people are now realizing that this is Marin Kitagawa, 
and they're trying to cancel this artist and they're trying to cancel each other and once again the the english vtuber community eating themselves alive over the stupidest things complete non-issues so next we are looking at what is called isekai anime con which is scheduled for later this month and you're probably wondering it's in salt lake city it doesn't look like it has a whole lot of traction why are we talking about this well unfortunately for them they banned this VTuber right here, who was, they believe in, it seems based on the circumstantial evidence, that they were banned because they're a lollicon. There were different people trying to cancel them, and while this was happening, they were dropped from their multi-day events and their guest appearance without any notice, and she already had uh, dozens or hundreds of dollars of merchandise in route to this event to, of course, sell them at the convention. So this is a pretty big deal. Now, I will point out, I don't agree with their comment fully about Sean Shiplock, the voice actor. Um, I do agree about the some of the um, pro-ship aspects, like he, he's pro-ship, and he's made jokes about shipping uh, or wanting to smash a Lolly character, even though it was a joke. Like, the idea that someone like him in that regard could go to the convention and have no problems, but this person gets banned... For similar behavior, I get what they're trying to go at with that part. But of course, they were pointed out here and they were told that they had a contract and they were fired for spreading rumors and things like that and they were blocked when they tried to protest this, of course. Now here is the last post they made uh, late last night and they said, unfortunately, we recently had to cancel one of our panelists. This person was not a contracted guest. They were not selling at our convention and were not in any way being paid for their appearance. They retaliated by spreading rumors and harassing us on social media. We look forward to seeing all of you guys next week. So, as will become very clear, a whole lot of gaslighting in this situation, basically saying uh, things that didn't happen and that this person was harassing them. Well, they weren't harassing this anime convention and the people behind it. They were simply pointing out the fact that they were unfairly removed and had invested into this anime convention and now are not only removed from the convention but they're out money that they use to purchase and ship this merchandise so i actually saw this late last night and like i saw that tweet and i responded with a simple interesting you can see it's now deleted of course but uh you can't blame me that wasn't my most uh creative response i've ever made but you know what when when you you when you got done making, I got done making a 36 minute video covering the full timeline of events involving the Hogwarts legacy related drama. Like, could you blame me yesterday for just saying a simple interesting, like my brain cells were completely fried at that point, but they would respond about, I don't know, 10, 11 hours later. And they made this post early in the morning, a long thread explaining what happened. And as you can tell with the 10 thousand views and two likes it's not going well so it starts by saying we elected to delete the tweet from yesterday the person reference broke our policy on harassment and bullying other con attendees which is why we canceled their panels uh doesn't seem like that was what they said back there of course but nonetheless you go back to here and they say uh we failed in giving proper communication regarding the situation. Isekai Anime Con will strive to do better moving forward. Yeah, it seems like a lack of communication would lead to a public conversation directed at you if you're not going to communicate properly with the guests that you're removing. But they go on to say, the volunteer who wrote the now deleted tweet was horrified when it ended up meaning and implying someone they and we did not intend uh, they are sorry and also wish to apologize to our followers and those concerned. What about apologizing to the person that you fired from this event with virtually no explanation and are now using their public, uh, public complaints, bringing attention to this unfair act. You're now labeling that as the reason that they were fired, which is absolutely ridiculous and citing this policy on harassment and bullying. Well, people aren't allowed to defend themselves from being unfairly removed from the convention. And they end with, and let me also point out that the volunteer who wrote this, it's like, dang, that intern who wrote that terrible tweet that's getting us canceled right now. Oh, that stupid intern, like, please, just at least stand by it. Like, 
this whole thing is just digging their grave even deeper. And I, I really don't understand why they just don't admit that they messed this up. That's really all there is to it. Like they go on to say, FYI, we only included the part about the volunteer at their request. This is our platform and they are not at fault for the tweet. What do you mean? You're like, they're apologizing and then you're saying that they're not at fault. It's just very weird. Like this whole thread and all these interactions over the past 48 hours with Isekai Anime Con is really just kind of a an example of how not to handle a event like this and how to ruin your PR so fast. Like this sounds like a nightmare of a convention. I will tell any person who's running conventions, never ever unfairly ban people, but especially don't start trying to ban Lollicon related stuff, whether it's people who are interested in it or trying to sell it because you can go to any major convention and find plenty of panels selling this type of content. It is not weird. The only people that think it's a big deal is social media and the kinds of people who aren't even going to go to this event anyways. And I don't know why they made an example out of this VTuber, but it's unfortunate and it's really more unfortunate for them because this probably hurt their image a lot and made people hesitant to even want to engage this convention at all. But I want to end this video with two updates. This is an update to a story we covered about two days ago. If you want the full details, you can look at this at that video. We're talking about this account right here. I censored their name in the previous video, but it doesn't really matter at this point. They have protected their account. And in fact, they have now changed their profile picture and name. Now, this is someone that Twitter has dubbed beautifully Detroit Reen, which is just chef's kiss. So to sum up everything very quickly, I covered some drama involving them. They made a whole host of threads claiming on behalf of Japan that Japanese people don't really care about anime and that it's not a part of their culture and saying that there's like this invasion of weeaboos trying to uh, get their way into Japan who realize that it's not this anime wonderland they think it is. And then they claim that Western VTubers using Japanese names were trying to appropriate and uh, imitate Japanese women, which is a form of digital yellow face in their opinion. Yeah, it was a joke, especially given the fact that Detroit Reen over here, she was only part Japanese and she was born in Detroit, Michigan and then moved to Japan later in life and is now essentially speaking on behalf of all Japanese people in ways that they don't agree with. She is largely criticized by people from Japan and she got very cocky with some popular threads she posted disparaging anime fans and VTuber fans, particularly from the West. And she just kept going and eventually people called her out and my video among hundreds of Twitter users talking about her eventually forced her into privating her account and changing her entire identity, which by the way is not even the first time she's done this. We actually covered in the other video this time where she got involved in a kimono drama where she was claiming that she knew how to properly draw these things and how to properly suit people in kimonos, which was criticized by Japanese Twitter. And then she tried to double down. She rebranded into this one and now she's rebranding into a whatever this is. It's an unfortunate situation for her. But uh, in all of this, I also saw another tweet that was crazy. This, I missed this one on the other video. So she said, into all of the uh, black, indigenous, and people of color who follow me, I love you all. Thank you for being incredible. If you're in Japan and you ever need someone who looks white to use their white privilege card to get stuff done, I got you. I will absolutely use the fact that I look white to help. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a white savior complex if I've ever seen one. So... I guess it's not too surprising that she managed to piss off so many different communities and nations to the point where I don't think there's any safe space for her. Okay, you piss off Japan, you piss off people from the West, you piss off anime fans, you piss off VTubers. Like, what's left at this point? Like, no wonder you're getting canceled by, you know, 50 different directions to the point of having to rebrand again. It's, it's hardly surprising. But I wanted to end this video with our final update. This was another story we covered recently. I have been told, so we'll play it so you guys get a sense. This man is dancing in front of his favorite idol. And some people were making fun of him, calling him a dork and a creep and all these things. And I was just saying, like, I wish everyone in the world were that enthusiastic and happy 
about something they love and enjoy. Well, it turns out there's a little more to it than that. It turns out, and I've seen this from TikToks that are poorly translated, but I'm going to go out and, and try to verify this, but it appears that they are married now. From what I've seen, I'm going to take the word on, on some poor translations. These two are married. At least I've seen TikToks of them being in person together in what appears to be their home. So that's really the, the inspiring nature of this story, guys. Keep schizo, keep being schizos. Like, you know, you, you, you'll make it. Your favorite idol or your Oshi, you'll make it, guys. You, you can do it. Don't give up. But uh, yeah, I thought that was a funny update and uh, a wholesome chungus way to end this video that was filled with all kinds of drama and controversy. But uh, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please let me know all of your thoughts about these uh, various topics in the comment section down below. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.